Hello, hello. You are tuned in to Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle here on Urban Broadcast Radio, your station for faith, music, and talk. As always, I am so excited you have chosen to tune in today. It is Motivational Monday, and I want to encourage you to stay connected with me on all forms of social media. Facebook slash Warriors Talk with the Ness, Twitter at Warriors Talk One, Instagram Warriors Talk One. You can go to Periscope at Warriors Talk One. You can email me show ideas as well as if you have anyone you think would be would love to be a guest on the show. And that is um, Warriors Talk One at gmail.com. Please go to my website, which is www.warriorstalk.org, and you can get all the information as far as up-and-coming events, any guests that will be on the show, anything that we have coming up that we think you should know, please visit the website. If you ever miss a live audio of the show, go to Spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, Follow me and I will follow you back. If you want to see a live video, then you go to the YouTube channel, which is Warriors Talk with Lady Rochelle for Eyes on the Community. And that will give you any live video that we do here on Facebook or anywhere else when I'm around town. You know I will pop out the camera in a minute. And my guest right now is a witness to that. <laughs> So I am excited today because we are celebrating our Phenomenal Women series. And we know that we have some phenomenal women in our lives. And I think that it is very important that we salute them because we work hard. We wear so many hats. And so often we are underappreciated. And not that we're looking to be celebrated for our normal everyday activities that we do, but it's nice to feel appreciated every now and then, especially from your sisters. And so I decided that since this was Mother's Day, that you know some people may not be a mother, and so they may not get that celebration, they may not get the cards, they may not get the roses. So let's celebrate them with words of encouragement. Um, it could be an email, it can be a text, it could be um, you paying it forward, buying them something, if you know they like Starbucks or whatever, buy them a little $5 gift card, although Starbucks $5 may not be much, right? <laughs> you know, buy them something. It, it could be, sometimes it could be just the simple things that you could make someone's day. A word goes a long way. So we are going to celebrate some of the phenomenal women on today, as well as yourself. Let me just um, celebrate my sponsors. I'm really excited about my sponsors because they have took time to invest in me with the show. Because as you know, this show is not free. Every single month, it is not free. So they heard me on air, some of them, and they said, oh, you know, we like what's going on with Warriors Talk and we want to invest. So let me just tell you this. If you like what's going on with Warriors Talk and if you don't want to be a sponsor but you want to donate, maybe a one-time donation, you can go to paypal.me slash Warriors Talk 1 and you can make a donation. No donation is too small. It doesn't matter. Anything helps. It goes a long way. So let me tell you who are sponsoring Warriors Talk. We have Emmanuel Church of God in Christ with my pastor, Michael Richardson. And we are located at 3058 West Van Buren in Chicago. And at Emmanuel, we are building up on a solid foundation. So you should come check us out. We're there Sunday, 11 a.m. for worship service. Um, we have Sunday school at 930, and we have Bible study on Wednesday, my uh, pastor called it Bible Institute Day. And let me tell you, he breaks down the word. He teaches. You have a chance to ask, um, ask questions. And it's just a phenomenal experience. So I would encourage you to come check us out. I also have Paula Kelly with Allstate. And she will take care of all of your insurance needs. So contact Paula Kelly at Allstate.com. Um, she will walk with you with the policy with a fine tooth comb. Let me tell you, I've been in an accident and I had this lady, I didn't even have Allstate. And she sat with me and she walked with me through everything that I needed to do and told me exactly what the insurance company was gonna do. 
Now, if that ain't a blessing, because I didn't even have Allstate. So I was excited about that. I also have Candace Lucas with RID Alert, and it's R-I-D Alert. She is um, a breast cancer survivor who came on the show, and she actually liked the program. And she said, are you looking for sponsors? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so she has been a sponsor, and I just um, contacted her today um, because her um, sponsorship was up. She was like, I got you. Send me the information so I can renew. I say, God is so good. He's just awesome. So you can go to ridalert.com, that's R-I-D alert.com, and she takes care of all of your um, in-store and online pest control needs. And then we have um, Gloria Dotson with Mary Kay Cosmet Cosmetics, and we know we like to get glammed up, and it's important that we take care of our skin, you know, we smell good, you know, we buy things for the people that we love. So if you're looking for something special from head to toe, you can contact Gloria Dotson with Mary Kay, and she would take care of all of your beauty needs. So I'm excited about that. Thank God for my sponsors. So this show is actually dedicated to um, Skin Cancer Month. It is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and we just want to make sure that everybody that's going through skin cancer, or if you have a family member that's taking care of someone, that we are going to keep you in our prayers because we know that this is not an easy journey to go through, especially go through alone. So we just want to salute the caregivers who are taking care of those as well with cancer. Our healing verse is coming from Proverbs 31 and 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Amen. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to listen to a poem by Maya Angelou. Girl. <laughs> hey, Facebook. So you can't hear the poem because I had him to turn it down. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um... Hello, Annette. Hey, Bethany. Oh, hey, Missionary Vivica. Wow. Hey, Henry. I thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share the video. Please share the video. Thank you. We're listening to a poem by Maya Angelou, Phenomenal Woman, so give us a second. I like the way she said that. <laughs> Thank you, Henry, for sharing the video. I appreciate it. You guys invite followers in. Hey, Janice. Thank you. Hey, Nicole. just finished listening to Maya Angelou, Phenomenal Woman. And that's what this series is all about. It's about celebrating the phenomenal woman in our lives as well as ourselves. Because like I said, we work hard and um, we don't get the praise that we, we should get, but we are thankful for the praise that we get. Because like I said, we don't get paid to be a mother. So what we doing, we don't expect for, you know, uh, people to give us anything outside of the ordinary. But it's nice to know that you are appreciated. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna talk to um, a phenomenal group of women. And they sent a representative who is gonna give us some information that's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> um, I have with me um, sisters working it out. A health advocacy in motion 
It is an advocacy program which purpose is specifically targeted the most medically underserved parts of African American community for breast cancer research outreach activities. It was created by the young physician and breast cancer survivor, Dr. Monica Peak, MD, MPH, who, was, who is an attending physician at the University of Chicago Medicine. Its beginning was a collaborative effort between the Chicago affiliate of the Black Women's Health Imperative, the Chicago chapter of the Sisters Network, Inc., the Chicago chapter of Wyoming National Breast Cancer Coalition Fund, Rush University Medical Center, and the Cook County Hospital. And so what I read about Monica was when she started this, she did not have breast cancer. I'm like, oh my goodness, like she started it four years before she even received that diagnosis. And so she decided that there was a problem with the um, alarming rate with breast cancer in the Chicagoland area. And so she decided, okay, let me do something about this. And she started Sisters Working It Out. And as you can see, she has a powerhouse behind her with all of the different um, organizations that she's associated with. And so today we have a sister working it out with us, and her name is LaRonda Witherspoon. Welcome, LaRonda. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is LaRonda Witherspoon. I'm a um, health educator for Sisters Working I've been educated for two years. Um, I joined the organization, um, started off as a medical assistant with an access under Beulah Brent, uh, which is a, a, a executive director. Um, she got me on the, on, the, on the mission to become an educator, um, to go out in the community and educate women of African American um, about early detection, um, certain uh, screenings, um, health, nutrition. So that's what we do. We go out in the community and just educate our people on uh, becoming knowledgeable about the resources that, that's out there. So, um, and we know that most of the time people don't even know what resources are out there. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And so I like that um, when I went to the health fair, which is where I met LaRonda, is they had um, many different organizations there. Um, they had information about health care. Mm -hmm. You had Walgreens there. You had the Metropolitan Breast Cancer Task mm -hmm. Force there. Um, you had um, Our Pink Hearts. It was a lot of different organization, organizations that had information that's very vital to what we need every single day. Yes. And most of the times we don't get out when we hear that they have in these different fairs. Right. We don't really take the time out to go and to see what information is going on, even if you don't need it for yourself. Absolutely. If you have someone in your family that may be sick, then you need to grab this information so that you can um, help them with resources because some things you may not have to pay for. Right. They have a lot of different things out here that um, we can take advantage of to help us live a better quality of life. So um, that's why I'm very appreciative of um, Sisters Working It Out because they are serving the medically underserved, right. which means what? Because some people may not know what that means. Um, which means that um, people that, well, everybody at this point should be insured. But for those who are uninsured, we have programs that... Um, a little or no cost where we can set up screenings, exams, um, help women, um, get them into the you know health centers to get these exams, pep smears, and um, breast cancer screenings, and um, for early detection. That's pretty much what we, we want, just to make sure that they understand the importance of um, getting screened for breast cancer. Um, and any cancer at that point, you know, yes. letting them know what Sisters Working It Out does, you know, so. So this is, um, you said the important thing is early detection early and getting detection. screened. Yeah. And we know that a lot of times the women are afraid of that screening process for some reason. And um, we all been there, we all been there. But um, it's important that we do get it done so that we can have that early diagnosis or um, just to know where you stand, what, where your risk lies, I think it's important. Tell me this, with Sisters Working It Out, is it um, a program to where you're just educating or are you um, holding their hands and going with them to these different appointments? Like, 
you know, guiding them to where they should go next in the process? Actually, Sisters Working It Out do a number of things. They actually um, set up the appointments. Oh, wow. get, you know, give them the referral, set up the appointments, in some instances, um, you know, go with the patient to um, the screenings. Some patient, not, some page people just feel like, you know, um, if they don't know, the better. But then we're trying to educate them on finding out, uh, just getting screened. So yes, we we set up the referrals. We we um. We just, we, we do everything. We set up the referrals, we get them to their appointments. Um, we even have programs outside of that to where, um, I know you have the HIV, I, I looked at that. You have the HIV going on. I remember seeing the bus outside, the, well, the van outside when we were doing um, at the fair. And I also saw the dental van outside as well. So I saw different things that you guys were doing in the neighborhood that a lot of us can benefit from. And um, so Sisters working it, out, working it Out is not just about cancer awareness as well, but they have a broad um, array of resources that you can use. Yes. Um, we currently, Sisters Working It Out, uh, we currently um, are looking for educators now. Yes. Uh, women that's interested in, in joining a training program to become community health educators and like I say going out in the community educating women and men um, about breast cancer how to properly um, do breast exam when to do it when to get screened uh, we even assist them with um, getting into the medical centers um, and pretty much everything so uh, and like I say, it's, it's little to no cost uh, with these resources that we have. Um, and like I said, we're currently looking for recruiting, we recruiting health care educators. So you're looking for community health care healthcare educators. So like if someone came to you, what kind of experience do they need to have? You know, is it... Well, it's a training that you have to go through. It was 12 weeks. Um, you'll go through it, uh, educator, I mean, education training. Um, we, we focus on uh, early detection. We focus on screenings. We focus on nutrition. We focus on um, pretty much the whole overall health of uh, just learning about different things so that when we go out in the community and we talk to people that's not aware, we let them know how everything connects, like, mm, you know, yes. how eating healthy, you know, uh, could be a reason why certain things, you know, come about. So we try to talk to women and, and, and about the overall health. Nutrition is definitely one, you know, because African Americans is the ones who's, you know, dying of, of breast cancer, mm -hmm. and we don't always eat healthy. We don't. So we focus on that too. So you go through a training with Kim, uh, Kim Hampton. She's the project director, and uh, once you do that, you graduate and you become an educator, and you can go out there and be able to promote, um, and you know, and, and and inform ladies about breast cancer. Wow, so you don't necessarily have to be a breast cancer survivor or just someone who has a heart to go out and educate the community. Exactly. Somebody that's, that has a heart, that's willing to put in the time and dedication because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, anything you need, you will get it from Kim, trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will get it from Kim. Um, she will teach you, and Rochelle, she, they will teach you everything that you need to know. They will provide you with everything you need when you go out in the community. Um, yes. So. It's just, it's like the time and dedication that we, we ask for just to become an uh, educator. And I think that's important that the people in the community see people like themselves that's giving them the information. Yes. It's like it's more, you're more receptive to the information when, when I look, when I look like you, you look like me when you're giving me the information. Yes, and that's what makes it easy for me um, to go out in the community because they looking at me like, you know, I, I look young to them, so mm -hmm. they, I'm easily, they can approach me, they come to me, and then when I start telling them what we do, uh, for our sisters working it out, and, and, and it's a lot of information that they don't know about. There's a lot of resources that they don't know about. And sometimes you just have to um, get to know a person, uh, hold their hand, and mm -hmm. walk them 
through certain stages because they be terrified. So that's what Sisters Working It Out does. We go out different, we try to go to the fairs, the churches, um, um, and just, just promote what we do. So. so I like that you don't discriminate with male and female, so you educate both. Because we know that cancer does affect both, as well as breast cancer. So it's important that we don't leave our men out when it comes to this important information. Correct. Correct. We know how hard it is to get them to come to the doctor as well. So. Um, to have someone to come to them with the information, you know, just makes it a little more easier for them. So we definitely appreciate that. So um, Sisters Working It Out, it says um, they participate primarily in the African-American women who reside in the Chicago or the Chicagoland area whose ages range from ages 20 to the mid-70s. And in the recent years, um, Sisters Working It Out has targeted the west side the Woodlawn area and Inglewood communities because of the high breast cancer mortality rate within those areas. And so they said they service um, in the first three years, they have empowered 1,500 women with this important health information and they have helped facilitate um, the screenings, over 200 women that didn't even had a mammogram in, a, in several years. And it's like, it, that's a scary thought because you know you're supposed to get it every year. But when you are med medically challenged, yes. then that can't happen. Yes. So um, the fact that we have a program like Sisters Working It Out that's out here in the community that is basically taking the sisters and the brothers by the hand and sitting down with you, educating you, giving you all the tools that you need so that you can take action with what you know. Right. Because we know with just within our community, it's alarming rate on um, women with breast cancer. Our regression alone is 96 point, you know, 96% uh, of women, African American women, um, is diagnosed with breast cancer. Then we have um, the Latinos, the whites, and then we have um, Rosalind comes in uh, the num the next highest area to for breast cancer and that's at 94 wow. percent so all these neighboring communities within our uh, you know community this is why it's so important for us to um get out there to do what we do and to educate you know the women and men about breast cancer so and we do it through by you do by outreach direct outreach patient education navigation programs we, we try to grab them any way possible just to make them aware of what's going on because we die, African Americans are dying at an alarming rate uh, with, with this uh, disease. We are dying at an alarming rate, and we don't have to die at we an alarming don't. rate, we don't. but because we are not getting in and getting screened like we should, then they're not able to catch it early. And most of the time, um, you know what's running in your, what runs in your family. Exactly. So if you know that breast cancer runs in your family, even if it's not your immediate family, but it's somewhere down the line, any type of cancer, period, right. that runs in your family, you should be letting your doctor know, hey, I need to get screened for this. You need to be paying attention to the different age milestones to let you know what you need to get screened for. Because let me tell you, it's good to have options. When you, if you, if you have a cancer diagnosis, it's good to have options. Yes. And you want to get in early enough so that you can have options and options that are controllable. So that's why our sister's working it out. Information is very important. There are. It's outreach, so they're reaching out to the community and giving you this information for free. And then the programs that are um, helping you with the resources to get um, attached to, some of them are minimum cost, if right. anything. Load up. Yes, yes. And, and like I said, these services that we offer, we, we, we just getting the women, you know, in a health center, in a medical facility so that they can do the early screening so that you know they know their status and and, and uh, find out especially the women that have cancer that runs through their family mm -hmm. it's so important that they know that they're high risk and that they need to be screened probably earlier than 40 um, because it is 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 the yes. second leading cause of cancer you know in the United States yes. so like i say early detection is 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 the key 
I agree with you. I, I don't like that they changed the age to 45. They pushed it back to 45. So, yes, they pushed it back. So, I agree with you that women should get screened earlier than 40. Yeah. If you know somebody in your family that got diagnosed, you should be getting um, screened 10 years prior to the diagnosis. So, I was diagnosed at 43. So, my daughters should be getting um, screened at 33. I tell them, start doing it when you start going to the doctor. Start doing it now. Your monthly breast exams, you know you should be doing those at home. Your clinical breast exams is when your annual exam comes. And then your mam your mammograms. Now, if you have somebody in your family that has breast cancer, talk to your doctor so that you can get in there and get the mammograms done early. You don't have to wait for the recommended age exactly. if it runs in your family. So you're right. That's very important. Yes. What we're going to do is we're going to take a break. We're going to listen to, um, and like I said, this, this um, series is all about um, speaking life into the phenomenal women that are a part of our lives. And so the song that we're going to listen to right now is Toby Mac with Speak Life. Okay, he had to turn this off because I, I don't want the music to be heard because Facebook will, um, they can't see me. They'll snatch it. I'm about to turn it on me. Hey, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I saw my first lady on here. Hey. Hey, Thomas Barnett. Hi. Oh, wow. Hey, Kim. Janice, what are you saying? Men are the ones that I notice don't go to the doctor until their body start giving them a sign uh -huh. that something is wrong. I read that most men find out that they have cancer at stage three. You know what? You're not even... You're not lying. It's it's true. Mm -hmm. um, you have some men that that are on top of their health. Thomas Barnett said, "What's the topic? Um, we're talking. This is our phenomenal women series, and we're talking about. Um, we have sisters working it out here, talking about um, health advocacy in motion. So basically, they're going out in the community, reaching out to the public, and telling them all about different programs, all about um, early detection for cancer, and um, trying to get them to come in and get the testing done early. They connecting them with resources, as well as um, sometimes having to um, navigate with them with their appointments. And so they're playing all the roles and, and connecting all the dots so that they can remove all the barriers from um, the people in the community because we know that sometimes this can be a frightening um, a frightening thing to even go and get screened for cancer. So um, it's programs and organizations like Sisters Working It Out that um, eliminate some of the stress that's associated with these um, with um, cancer diagnosis or just the screening process, period. So, oh my goodness. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. Thank you guys for sharing the video. We're on. Um, what we're doing right now is we listen to Toby Mac um, speak life. You guys can't hear it because if Facebook hears it, they're gonna block the video. So I don't want them to block the video, and so you guys can't hear it. But um, if you have any comments, please leave your comments below. Um, any if you have any questions for Laronda um, and sisters working it out, she did say that they were looking for um, health health. What do you call it? Educa health educators. Health educators. So if you guys want to be a health educator, you know you can. Um, Should they go to the website? Yes, I have um, three contacts. We have the telephone number, and that's three one two five seven four thirty fifty three. We also have the email, and that's uh, S W I. O Chicago at gmail.com. Um, we also have the website you all can go to. That's www.sistersworkingitout.org. And we also have a Facebook page, and that's www.facebook.com slash sistersworkingitout. So that's how you can contact um, either Kim Hampton, she's the project director, Rochelle Paul, and she's the co-director, or you also can contact Renette Wilson, she's another educator, at either uh, forms of those contacts. All right, so you guys have all the information, and she will give it out again at the end of the show as well. So um, you guys, if you want to get in contact with her, or um, if you have anybody that need their services, because you guys come out, can they get in contact with you to come out? Yes. Okay. We we come out, um, we love to come out to different fairs, um, different church events. Um, any event that you all have, you could just send a, um, 
a face sheet, I mean, a, a cover letter to the website, and uh, we'll see if we'll put it on the calendar, see what's available, and most likely we can get somebody out there to um, participate in you all's events. Okay. I have a question on here too from um, Vivica William Gibson. So when we come back, I'm gonna ask her question. Okay. okay. And then Janice said that she was she was interested. Hey. Okay. Hello. Okay, she needs. Okay. Hello, if you are just tuning in, this is Lady Rochelle with Warriors Talk here on UBM Radio, your station for faith, talk, and music. And we are talking with um, sisters working it out, and we are giving some vital information. LaRonda Witherspoon is here, and she's giving us some important information for you phenomenal women out there so that you can get in and get screened early and so that you can get this information and pass it on to friends as well as become a um, health educator. So um, you have that opportunity as well. A lot of times we say we want to we want to help and we want to do our part and we don't know where and how. So this is a chance for you to get involved, get out in the, into the community and do your part with Sisters Working It Out. I believe we have a call. We do. Hello. Hi, how are you? I am good. Mm -hmm. So who are we speaking to? Okay, so we have right now on the phone with us Mylea, and she is with Devotionals by MSM, and she's going to give us our motivational moment right now. Hold on, you guys, because we have a caller that's talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That. Yes, I do. <laughs> that was good. I wish you guys on Facebook had heard that. Um, this, how can they get in touch with you, Devotionals by MSM?
Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that motivational moment um, by Devotionals by MSM. And you can find her on Facebook. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. So that was your motivational moment by MSM Devotionals. And in the news, as it relates to health news, um, I looked up this article that was on, on CNN, and it talked about the FDA was going after 14 companies for um, selling illegal cancer treatment. Oh, wow. Yes, and so what they did was they flagged about 60 products that are out there right now that are a waste of money and could be dangerous to people who want to be cured. And it says the FDA says that the products are fraudulent. So what they did was they sent letters out to all of these different companies to let them know to pull their products because they're claiming a cancer cure-all. Okay. And we know that that's not, it's not right. So. Some of the companies were Life Vantage, um, Healing Within, Hawk Doc, and Everything Healing, Doctors Vic, just to name a few of the companies that they made them pull their products because they're claiming a cancer cure-all. And then also in the news, um, breast cancer rates rise among Asian American women, um, while the other numbers for the other races stay stable, which is surprising. It says breast cancer rates has recently been steadily rising with the um, Asian American women over the past 15 years as the disease seems to be stabilizing other races. And so that in itself is um, very interesting because we know that um, normally it's African Americans where the number is just rising and rising, but we know that cancer does not discriminate. No, it do not. <laughs> does it, it do care? Not. It just doesn't care. So let me hop over to Facebook because I have LaRonda Witherspoon here with Sisters Working It Out, and she is just phenomenal. Thank <laughs> you. And she's given us some awesome information, I tell you. Um, when I saw her at the health fair, she was just very patient with me. <laughs> and so I just really appreciate her. Okay, so Vivica says, she says, just lately, they have, oh wait, no. She was talking about being screening. She said she's been getting screened at an early age, since her early 20s, I think, for a cyst. And she wants to know, uh, is there a risk at her getting, because she's been getting screened so early? No, I think that's a good thing that she's been getting screened. Um, earlier the better. So no, I don't think it's in a risk uh, with, with you know, getting screened. I think she needs to continue until they find out what exactly is going on with her and make sure that it's not breast cancer. I think a lot of people get nervous because they know that it's a low dose of radiation that comes with getting yes. screened. But, because um, some people say to screen or not to screen. But I think um, to have a peace of mind you know, you want to go in and get screened. Absolutely. And I, I really think, I know uh, when it comes to cancer um, treatment and everything to do with cancer, everybody says it's all about money. So, you know, a lot of times we think that they're going to have us doing stuff because it's money related. But um, I think her going in, like you said, once a year, mm -hmm. um, we, go, we have to go once a year for we should be going annually for everything. Exactly. So Absence no. Is everything. Yes. So no. I so think no. She, what she's doing is is excellent. Um, continue to do it, and like I say, it, the earlier the better. Mm -hmm. So. I agree with you. I totally agree. And so Janice Oliver says her aunt had cancer. Should she be getting screened? Should she be getting screened? Mm -hmm. It's in the family. Yes, absolutely. If it's in the bloodline, I suggest that you go talk to your medical provider. Um, let them know that um, a relative in your family has can breast cancer and, and get early screened. Yes. Because you know what? I'm guilty because my sister, I had a sister that passed away at the age of 52 from breast cancer. Sorry. You know, thank you. And when she when she got breast cancer, like nobody else in my family had cancer on no sides. And we were like, okay, where's this cancer coming from? Mm. And so she was very sick. You know, she was sick with diabetes and she just had a lot of other health ailments going on. So we're just thinking it just came about because of everything she's going through. So that was in 2010. So in 2013, I get diagnosed. Wow. Now had I been smart, 
when I went to my doctor, I would say, okay, wait, my sister just passed away from breast cancer. Should I be worried? Right. Should I be worried? And what should I be doing right now? But, you know, we don't think, we always think, not me. But, you know, what I found also uh, with African-American um, culture, we don't talk amongst each other enough. Mm -hmm. Because when your sister was going through what she was going through, um, if she would have just gave the women in her family just the, the the fact that she was going through breast cancer and made them, you know, some, some people just like to keep it to themselves and they don't want nobody to be burdened with the, the news of a cancer, period. Right. But I think as, um, I think as women, we need to talk more within our family to find out the different illnesses that's going on mm -hmm. in the family so that we can go to our medical provider and let you know them know what's going on within our uh, family. And, and that could be like a, a way to, you know, early detection, yes. you know, so. I agree with you. We had um, one lady on the show and she talked about setting up a table at the family reunion that had like um, a medical form yes. or something where everybody can sign up and wow. fill out and say what they had. So you would know who had what. So when you go to the doctor, you would know what to get screened for. Absolutely. And I thought that, you know, we do everything else, mm -hmm. you know. We invest in everything else. We keep maintenance up on everything else. We get our weave done. We get our <laughs> nails done. Yes. We going to get our face beat. We getting our lashes done. You know, we going to work out. We getting our car wash. You know, we doing everything, you know, for outer appearance. Absolutely. But what's going on in the inside of you That's is important. also important. Yes. And if you don't take care of what's going on in the inside of you, the outside of you is going to reflect that sooner or later. Sooner or later, yes. That's true. That's tr Yeah, because um, that's why it's important for you to um, talk amongst your family. Yes. Like we said, I know the generation before us, they don't they didn't like to talk. My the baby boomers, they do not like to talk about anything that's going that's on. That's so true. They keep everything a secret. And I my dad just passed away. It's been a year in April. Oh, wow. From lung cancer. And so I, we didn't know that he suffered from prostate cancer two years prior. So like my my parents didn't say anything like my mom didn't say you know that what what was going on with him they kept it a secret and I think he wanted cuz he my dad was a prideful man he yes. didn't want any pity he didn't want anything anybody doing anything for him he had never been sick so it's like okay you know he never really even liked going to the doctor so mm -hmm. now that the fact that he had to go he definitely didn't want anybody coming up there seeing him yeah. so they kept that a secret for two years that's what I'm talking about yeah. And that's why it's so important to, you know, find out what's going on within the family, find any type of cancer, so that you can go and get tested, get screened. Yes. And I just, and I'm, um, I had my brother on the show because, you know, I have three brothers and then, you know, it's a worry for them. Yes. Like, okay, now this happened to my dad. Should we be worried? Yes, you Absolutely. should be worried. This is a time that you should be going to your doctor and say, okay, I need to get certain tests because my father just passed Absolutely. away. Absolutely. And once you do that, you get the, the ball rolling. You put it in motion so that you can start getting those screening every single year. Absolutely. Like Vivica was saying, she gets it done. She's been getting it done since her early 20s. Okay, you, you're on the right track. You're doing yes. the right thing. The worst thing that you want is a surprise diagnosis. Nobody wants a surprise diagnosis. So if, you, if you're on top of your health, then you have a better chance of catching it early. And we know with early detection, you have a better chance at survival. Your options, you have more options when it comes to what to do about the cancer. Yes. And not just cancer, other diseases. You have high blood pressure. We know that heart disease is the number one killer. So all of these things kind of coincide with each other when we say eat healthy, eat healthy. exercise, eliminate the stress. Absolutely. Stay on top of your appointments. You know, yes. live basically. Yes. You know, make instead of making it a diet, make it a lifestyle. A lifestyle change. Yes. Yes. And that's what sisters working it out. We focus on nutrition and eating healthy. Um, but like I say, the overall health. We get you set up with different screenings. We get you set up with nutritionists. We get you set up with anything that could be going on. We get you set up diabetes. We have mm -hmm. diabetes classes within. Um, 
you know, our organization as far as access, community health. Um, so we have a lot of resources and connections to get you pretty much set up with anything that you need as far as the help, you know, pertaining to your health. And, and, and as African Americans, we definitely need to start eating right. Yes. And not just because we find out uh, we have high blood pressure, just, just, you know, doing it as a lifestyle change. And once it's a lifestyle change, it becomes more than a habit. Yes. You know, then it's it's harder to break because it's part of your normal routine. And so I agree with it being a lifestyle change. Um, if you have to pull somebody in with you, a lot of times it's hard to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have a buddy. Um, always good to have support. Yeah, yes, yes. So, um, absolutely, absolutely. So... We talk about um, all the time with cancer survivors how um, sometimes people go at it alone. They don't want to tell people what's going on with them. And you can't do this alone. Even with um, trying to just stay healthy on a regular basis, sometimes, you know, we eat stuff that we're not supposed to be eating. Yes. You know, we put, we do stuff all the time to ourselves that we're not supposed to do. And sometimes to have accountability partners say, hey, we're not going to do that today. You know, we're not going to eat that. Hey, let's go exercise. Exercise. Let's go do, you know. 30 minutes a day uh, uh, really make a difference. Um, eating healthy, watching what you put in your mouth, um, you know, making sure you get those follow-up screenings to for just like certain tests for diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, yes. cholesterol, checking all that, mm -hmm. just staying on top of your health. That's what Sisters Working It Out promotes. Um, Vivica um, Gibson Williams said, yes, we lost my dad to hypertension and cardiovascular disease, so I'm very vigilant with also monitoring my pressure that has been recently fluctuating. She said, diet is very important. Very important. And it is. Yes, it is. It is. I encourage you to just look up online the different foods that are um, anti-cancer. Because I look up all the foods that you can mm -hmm. eat that would help you keep these cancer cells out of your body. Oh, wow. She said her dad was only 50. Wow. Wow. Wow, so even even the young. Yes. Even the young can be affected. You Cancer don't discriminate, hypertension don't discriminate, heart disease does not discriminate people. So we need to make sure, like um, Vivica said, to be vigilant about your health. Yes. Because cancer is not planned. Um, it's not planned. It says um, 564,000 people are diagnosed um, every single year. And 1,500 die every single day from cancer. So we need to make sure that we are attacking cancer just like it's trying to attack us. We need to make yes. sure that we are vigilant about our health. So tell me, LaRonda, what else does Sisters Working Out has going on that we can benefit from? Oh, well, <laughs> like I say, um, Sisters Working It Out, we, have, we always have something going on. We, um, like I say, currently are uh, recruiting women that's interested in our training program to become health educators. Um, I have that number again and contact people. That's 312-574-3053. Um, we have an email that's Sisters Working It Out, uh, SWIO Chicago at gmail.com. We have the website, www.sistersworkingitout.org, and we have a Facebook page, www.facebook.com, Sisters Working It Out. We also have a Bowling for Cure um, event that's coming up May 20th. Um, the tickets is $30 per person, and it helps us continue to do what we do out here in the community. So it's a fundraising um, event. We would love to have anyone that's interested. You all can contact me, LaRonda Witherspoon, at 773-263-7244. We currently have those tickets uh, for sale, and it's all about helping uh, with the cure against cancer, breast cancer. We also have a gala, an uh, uh, annual gala that we do uh, always in August. Um, you also can contact any of the website, the email, the number. We have tickets on sale currently. You all can come and be a part. We love, love to have mm -hmm. survivors um, to participate in this event. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, it's something that I would love for any survivor um, anybody that's going through uh, cancer at the moment to come and see what Sisters Working Out is all about.
Oh, wow. They have a lot of things going on. So not only are they going out into the community, but they're also raising funds to be able to do what they do because it's not free. And so we appreciate it. I appreciate it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I put your information on my page along with the flyer okay. so that those who want to come, they can get that information Please. as well. Um, let me see. They're talking to us really quick. Um, Janice says, some people don't go to the doctor because they don't have insurance. I have a close friend that really needs resources to help her with her insurance that isn't expensive. Well, Sisters Working It Out can connect you to some of those resources. So please give her this information. Help her navigate through the system with um, Sisters Working It Out. And that's why shows like this are important. Um, Vivica said, garlic and cayenne pepper and herbal teas with a close watch on cholesterol numbers as well as is helping my pressure normalize. Limited fried foods and saturated fats. All absolutely, right. Absolutely. And she just, she just teached right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just gave y'all some valuable information for free. Thank you, Vivica um, Gibson Williams. So that's some information for free. Some things that you can do with, uh, if you don't, if you don't want to take the medicine or if you're, if you want to probably get off that medicine, we know with your doctor's consent, of course, mm -hmm. but there are some things that you can do on your own at home. And Vivica just gave you some information. That was garlic and cayenne pepper and herbal teas. You can watch and watch your numbers, she said, closely. It's helping her to normalize her numbers. Oh, wow. That's some, some very um, val valuable information. So I'm just encouraging all warriors to make sure that you are go to Sisters Working It Out website. It's sistersworkingitout.com. Mm -hmm. Sisters is it yeah. .org or .com? It's .org. .org. The website is www.sistersworkingitout.org. Make sure you go there and see the awesome things that they are doing in the community. And also, if you have someone that needs resources, refer them to the site. And also, if you want to be a community health educator, because they're looking for them, then make sure you go to the website and find out how you can do your part in helping people who are medically underserved. Because you just you never know because sometimes people don't say anything. That's right. They they don't say anything, and we know that cancer is running through our community at an alarming rate. So we need to make sure that we're doing our part. Even if you help one person, you are doing your part. And so I just want to encourage you to make sure that you share this video and that um, again I'm going to post the information on the page. Loranda, give the um, warriors um, some quick words of wisdom. Don't be afraid. Um, get out and, and, and find out what's going on with your body. Um, talk to the young people. Let them know the importance of um, just just keeping up with your health. Um, the young men, let them know also um, the importance of getting screened and, and, and just going to the doctor to get annual exams, period. Um, sisters working it out. Uh, just, just, just helping a sister out. Just, just helping us sister out. You know, we go through so much, and 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 sometimes we smile to keep from crying. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, a lot of times, people can get you and tell what's going on. You know, communicate, talk to one another, um, help one another. Resources that you know, get it out there. Like this show today, I thank uh, Lady uh, Rochelle just for having us on the show because, in any time you need us, at any time we can we can come out. But I just thank you for doing what you're doing, um, and and just helping another sister. So, I just I thank God for this platform that He has given me. Um, without my cancer battle, this Warriors Talk would not exist. So I. I can't, I don't take my journey back because without my journey, I wouldn't have found my purpose. And so I just thank God for finding my purpose, for giving me purpose through my pain. And to be able to reach out and help um, women and men who need this information and to encourage them into action. So I appreciate you, LaVonda Witherspoon, phenomenal you. woman. You kicked off our Phenomenal Woman series and you did it just do, so I really appreciate you. She is with Sisters Working It Out. They are a health advocacy in motion. Warriors, I wanna encourage you to continue to thrive while surviving. That's it, girl. <laughs> Dude, you do this so good. I'm girl, so nervous. You know what? Oh, shit. You did well. We're still on Facebook.
You do well. Um, thank you, uh, Missionary Vivica and Janice. You guys were running the show. <laughs> I appreciate the questions and for y'all being engaging. I appreciate it. Um, like I said before, I am going to post all of Sisters Working It Out information on my page so that you guys can get the information. Janice, I know you're interested in becoming um, an educator. Thank so, you, Janice. Yes. So I'm excited about that because we need people in the community, like I said, that looks like us, that's willing to be able to reach the people where they are. And so I really appreciate that. Okay, somebody said something. <laughs> Um, sisters at Sisters Working Out. I'm going to put the information on my page. Um, Annette says, excellent show, very informative. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. So I, I appreciate you being here, LaRonda. I thank you for just um, <laughs> answering the call, girl. <laughs> thank you for having us. Oh, not a, not a problem. Um, so again, I, I appreciate you guys listening. Please share this video with somebody. Um, who didn't get a chance to tune in um, to let them know that there are resources out here sometimes in our community is word of mouth because for some reason we don't like to share stuff. Yes. We don't. We like to keep things to ourselves when we find out things. So don't keep it to yourself because Sisters Working It Out is in the community and they are here to give you the resources that you need to help us decrease the number of breast cancer um, victims. I'm calling them victims because we didn't volunteer to have breast cancer, so I'm saying victims. But you know what? The victims can come out victoriously. You're looking at one. So I thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, we air every Monday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So tune in next Monday for our second part of our Phenomenal Women series. And we have Landa Lee Sam, which is doc star, and she's from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And she is going to give us some information about women's health. She is an OBGYN doctor, and I'm so excited just to have her a part of the show. Janice, teen suicide um, to help our youth. Um, I have Shirley, who was a guest on the show, is coming back on Janice to talk about teen suicide. Shirley is also doing a, a short film about um, teen suicide, so she will be on the show to cover that topic. And they're also going to be doing some filming because it's centered around mm -hmm. a radio station as well. So I'm excited about that. So um, God has blessed me with that connection. So. I will let you know when that show take place because I know you're going to be very vocal about it. Hey, Randy. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you again, LaRonda. I no appreciate problem. Thank you. you. Let me let her say goodbye to you guys so y'all can see my Thank my you for guys. having me. We looking for survivors. We always looking to connect with survivors. So thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak and get it out there what Sisters Working It Out does. God bless you all. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Remember, warriors, keep thriving while surviving.